has already moved through an area and removed that fuel and all of that fuel, um, then until that fuel reaccumulates, it simply can't reburn. Roger, not happy with that. That's, uh... We then look at the operational planning with the CFS, uh, look at what weather conditions we're going to need. Um, and then once it gets put on the yearly program, uh, we then look at the windows to, to undertake that burn. So working with the Bureau and, uh, and then obviously it's all the logistics involved in organising the crew as well. We've got about 35 crew, um, including aircraft as well, um, and that's basically what we need to manage the, the risk. So all the wind's on, on one side at the moment, so all the crew are focused on the area where we're going to have um, the initial ignition and where the embers are going to be flying across to manage it on the other side. Uh, yeah, once that's secured, oh, yeah. then we're able to move crew yeah, around to the other okay. side to complete the ignition at the end of the day, and then obviously we'll have crew mopping up throughout the yeah. evening and into the night as well. safely ignite and burn out this block we need to be able to do it slowly um, and in sections and we can't physically get in um, to the vegetation or we couldn't put crew in there safely to do it so we're able to use the aircraft because obviously they've got a lot more mobility and they can fly above it and what we do is you, we drop a specific um, fuel which is a gel and that drops out of the aerial ignition um, and the aerial drip torch and uh, ignites the fuels below it and we've got the ability to manipulate how much and the intensity of that based on the aircraft as well. So if I were to impact on this area now, there'd be nothing left to burn. With the environmental assessment, we look at um, any specific breeding cycles um, or habitat that need to be protected and we manage the operations around that. And then by putting in low intensity fires uh, at the start of the day, it actually does allow movement of animals outside the area. Um, so we even saw yesterday there were a number of lizards and koalas and kangaroos that were moving out of the prescribed burn area during the operation, which is great to see. And this morning when we came back to continue mopping up, there were lots of kangaroos moving around. We can hear the birds in the background flying in and out of the burn area and actually using it to feed. The area that you can see on this side was actually burnt in 2001, uh, so that was 19 years ago now, um, and before we did the burn it, it looked like this over here, so it does reaccumulate. Um, in the meantime, uh, it does look a little bit black and bleak, but it will come back. Um, so the aim is obviously to reduce the fuel um, to make sure it doesn't burn, and over time, the Australian bush, uh, it does rely on fire to regenerate, so particularly our Mallee Heath that we've got over on the Air Peninsula, uh, it will re out of the, the roots that are in the ground, and we will see um, all the regeneration come back very soon. Mm -hmm.